Greetings. I'm Pittsburgh Pirates President Frank Coonley, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the 2018 Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Baseball and softball teach our young people so many wonderful things like teamwork, sportsmanship, and determination. These are all values that will serve them well in their lives away from the baseball diamond. The Pittsburgh Pirates are committed to helping young people develop a deep appreciation for this great game of baseball and to pass that love on to their children. Pony League Baseball is played across our great country and around the globe. Here in Washington, Pennsylvania, you will see the best of the best in youth baseball. As you watch these talented young people play our national pastime, please make sure that you can see the joy that this great game brings to those who play it. The Pittsburgh Pirates are excited to help bring this joy to you through our partnership with the Pony League. On behalf of our entire organization, good luck to all of the teams, and we hope that everyone has a blast at the 67th Pony League World Series. We welcome you to Lou Hayes Pony Field, Washington, Pennsylvania, the site of the 67th edition of the Pony League World Series. And in our final game of the day, it's gonna be a matchup between Brownsville, Texas, as they take on Tijuana, Mexico. The activity began back on Thursday, the annual Dick Sporting Goods Fan Festival, where the mascots, the players, and fans turned out to get a sneak preview of what it's gonna be like over the next several days. Hi, everybody. I'm Tony Caridi. Thank you so much for being with us. Well, yesterday, rain took us out of our two games that were on the schedule. That means we're playing four today, and game number four is ready to go. What do you say we turn it over now to our public address announcer, Bob Gregg? Time now for game four of the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series, final game of the day today. South Zone champion Brownsville, Texas will be the visitors taking on the champions of Mexico from Tijuana, Baja, California. Let's meet the players, first of all, from Brownsville, Texas, leading off and playing shortstop, number two, Juan Rivera. Catching and batting second, number seven, Rudy Gonzalez. Batting third, the third baseman, number four, Damian Cortez. Pitching and batting fourth, number 17, Christopher Salceda. Batting fifth and playing left field, number 13, Jose Gutierrez. Batting sixth and playing second base, number eight, Jorge Alvarado. Batting seventh, the right fielder, number 29, Luis Balderas. Batting eighth and playing center field, number 42, Hugo Cantu Jr. And batting ninth, the first baseman, number 54, Ana Rivera. Number three, Kyle Pruneda. Number six, Adrian Garcia. Number 34, Justin Duran. Coach Hugo Cantu. Coach Cesar Rivera. Coach Juan Carlos Alvarado, the manager. Brownsville, Texas, the South Zone champions. And now for Tijuana, Mexico. Leading off the shortstop, number 21, Manuel Estrada, Jr. Batting second and playing left field, number 23, Roberto Cardona. Batting third and playing right field, number 10, Alberto Mendoza. Batting fourth and catching, number 19, Ernesto Lopez. Batting fifth, playing third base, number 13, Yvonne Rodriguez. Batting sixth, the center fielder, number 28, Hector Martinez. Batting seventh and playing first base, number 18, Miguel Sepulveda. Batting eighth and pitching, number 47, David Gomez Jr. Batting ninth and playing second base, number 25, Isaac Barga. Number four, Ian Zamarpa. Number 30, Ruben Ortiz. Number 34, Aldrich Leon. Number 35, Juan Valenzuela. Coach Juan Rojas. Coach Manuel Estrada. And the manager, David Gomez. Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. 
Umpiring at home plate, Jeff DeCellis. At first base, Jeff Vrabel Sr. Second base, Dave Smolko. And at third base, Ray Parker. Decisions Committee, Terry Faust, Tom O'Connor, Dick Witt. At this time, we ask you all to rise for the Pony Prayer and our national anthems. Gentlemen and boys, please remove your hats. Thank you to all veterans and active duty members of the United States Armed Forces for your service. We invite you to render a hand salute during the Star Spangled Banner. Almighty God, help us to realize that we are gathered here to watch young people play baseball, not to second guess strategy, dispute decisions, or question ability. That we are here to cheer, to encourage, to join in the fun that is baseball, not to jeer, discourage, or otherwise degrade the game. That while officials and players are expected to perform within the bounds of certain standards, we also as spectators are expected to conduct ourselves within the bounds of good sportsmanship. May this contest end without injury, without feelings of ill will, without disgrace, but as an activity worthy of thy blessing. Amen. Here at game four at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series from Lou Hayes Pony Field in Washington Park. Tijuana, Mexico, the home team. They'll be taking the field momentarily. When uh, got to pass out a lot of credit to a lot of people for uh, for getting things back on track here after the postponements last night. And, uh, you know, we've set it through pretty much every game so far, but... Uh, the grounds crew probably first and foremost for all the work they had to do after the, all the water this field took on last night. But a lot of folks volunteering in and around the park to uh, to make this thing go. That's what makes makes it such a success year in and year out. And, uh, everybody doing what they have to do to, to get these games in with four of them here today at Blue Hayes Pony Field. 305 feet to straightaway center field, 250 down the lines, 54 feet uh, as opposed to the 60 feet 6 inches that you're used to in uh, Major League Baseball. Starting lineup for Brownsville, Texas, leading off playing shortstop Juan Rivera, batting second and catching Rudy Gonzalez. In the three spot, it's the third baseman, Damian Cortez. 
Batting cleanup, the pitcher, Christopher Sauceda. Batting fifth in left field, Jose Gutierrez. The second baseman, Jorge Alvarado, bats sixth. Batting seventh in right field, Luis Balderas. Batting eighth in center field, Hugo Cantu. And rounding out the Brownsville lineup is first baseman, Annie Rivera. Get a look at David Gomez for Tijuana, Mexico. The right-hander loosening up. Right-handed pitcher, he'll be on the mound behind the dish. Ernesto Lopez from left to right of the outfield. Cardona, Martinez, and Mendoza. Middle infielders at short, Manuel Estrada. Isaac Barriga at second. First, Miguel Sepulveda. And over at third base, Ivan Rodriguez. Same umpiring crew throughout the day through uh, all four games. It'll be Jeff Deschellis calling the balls and strikes. Jeff Rabel Sr. at first base, Dave Smolko at second, and Ray Parker at third. Temperature has cooled a little bit down to 75. Humidity down a little bit as well. So nice, comfortable evening to watch the fourth game of the day here at the Dick Sporting Goods Plenty League World Series. Turned out to be a beautiful day after all the rain last night. Field looks great. Forecast uh, when we were sitting here last night during all that rain. Didn't look so promising for today, but the rain has stayed completely away, and it is a beautiful night for baseball here with some blue skies up there. Uh, we're ready to play. Just about ready to go as left-handed hitting shortstop one Rene Rivera steps in to lead it off for Brownsville, Texas. The South Zone champions. Rodriguez at third, looking for the bunt, already creeping in uh, onto the infield grass, as is the first baseman, Sepulveda. Now the first pitch to Rivera. Fastball high and outside. Out of the south zone, uh, this Texas team put up a ton of runs. A 21-8 win, a 17-11 win, a 17-0 win, a 10-0 win. This team knows how to hit the ball. Fastball fouled straight back by Rivera. Only loss in the South Zone qualifying tournament was a 6-4 defeat. One ball, one strike. Gomez, the right-hander, winds and delivers the 1-1. Fastball is up and in. Two and one to Rivera leading off the ball game. Gomez winds and delivers. Called strike on the outside edge, upper portion of the strike zone. Two and two. The night cap of a quadruple header today, Mark. Three earlier games. Two two pitch. Curveball just missed the outside edge. Bay County, Michigan defeated the Dominican Republic eight to five in game one today. 10-0 win for Youngstown, Ohio, over Austria. And then the 15-13 win that we just saw. The Bronx, New York, defeating Washington County. Payoff to Rivera. Good fastball from Gomez, but Rivera got a piece of it to foul it straight back. Rivera waiting on another 3-2 pitch. Gomez into the windup. Delivers, called strike three with a fastball. Rivera was ready to discard the bat and head uh, for first base, but from up here, that pitch looked pretty good. He certainly was ready to throw it, and that is a beautiful pitch. Belt high right down the middle. Rivera takes it for strike three. Good breaking ball from David Gomez to pick up the first strike out of the ball game. Brings up. Ronaldo, Rodolfo, excuse me, Rodolfo Gonzalez, the catcher. Right-handed hitter standing tight to that line in the batter's box. He likes to go by Rudy if that's easier for you, Mark. <laughs> Whatever he likes. <laughs> that's right. One ball, no strikes as Gomez now winds and delivers. Fastball inside. Happy 
This Texas team didn't get to the hotel on Thursday night until about 1 o'clock in the morning. 2-0 pitch. Kind of got jammed a little bit, did Gonzalez, but he fights it off and bounces it up the middle for a one-out single. They didn't land until 11, went to the hotel, and they got there before 1 o'clock, but they had to have their meetings with the Pony officials. They got their jerseys uh, when they arrived there because everybody was going to be at the ballpark on Friday. Well, and I will encourage folks uh, next year to attend the Fan Fest on Thursday night before the start of the series. Nice event up in front of Dick's Sporting Goods in Washington. They've been a tremendous sponsor of the Pony League World Series here the last couple of years. Damian Cortez, the batter, takes a ball. Right-handed hitting third baseman. Gonzalez at first with one out here in the top of the first inning. Gomez stretches and delivers with a runner going. Pitch misses down and in, throw down to second base. Hit first slide, stolen base for Gonzalez. He was in there in plenty of time. It's a really good stolen base. Had a good jump and some speed. Getting those white pants dirty early. Two balls, no strikes. Cortez waits as Gomez stretches and now delivers. Breaking ball drops in for a called strike on the inside part of the plate. Good pitch there from Gomez. Two and one. Stretch by Gomez. 2-1 pitch, fastball misses high, runner going, throw down to third, not in time, throw one hop the third baseman Rodriguez, but good jump there by Gonzalez. So he's stolen second and now stolen third as well. Two really good steals here from Gonzalez. Gets a good jump and he has a beautiful head first slide right into the bag. Three balls, one strike now to Cortez. Stretch by Gomez and the pitch. Called strike on the outside corner. You know, when I was a kid growing up playing ball, if I didn't get my white pants dirty after the game, you just go slide around to make sure. Because you didn't really play baseball if you didn't get your jersey or your pants dirty. Well, that just tells me you didn't try very hard in the game. Either that or you sat the bench one or the other. Yeah, it was a little bit of both. 3-2 <laughs> <Three two> pitch. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Gomez excited as he... Strikes out Cortez for the second out of the inning. Another good pitch here from Gomez. Just a little bit of a break to it. And Cortez can't connect just as he reaches a bit outside. Kept it to the outside part of the plate. Now the pitcher, Christopher Saceda, left-handed batter, steps in. Gonzalez, the runner at third with two down here in the top of the first. First pitch back, Saceda off the plate. Gonzalez with a big jump off third, too. He's a good base runner. Ready to go. David Gomez for Mexico. Stretches, checks third, now delivers. Ball skied out of play on the third base side. One ball, one strike. Two years in a row, Brownsville, Texas has been here to the Pony League World Series. Had a win last year over the Netherlands. Ball hit on the ground to the second baseman. Barriga throws to first, retires Saceda. And Brownsville, Texas here in the top of the first inning. A hit and a runner left the third after half an inning. Brown, Brownsville, Texas, nothing. T1 of Mexico coming to bat here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. As a mother of three, I've seen the positive impact sports have on kids. At Dick's Sporting Goods, we believe everyone should have the chance to play. And if cost ever gets in the way, that goes against everything we believe. If you find a lower price from a competitor, we'll match it with our best price guarantee.
because it's not enough to offer you the best gear. We need to offer it at the best price. The Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series is presented by Dick Sporting Goods, by the Washington County Tourism Promotion Agency, and by the Observer Publishing Company. Tijuana, Mexico coming to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. Scoreless ball game. Facing Brownsville, Texas, left-hander Christopher Sauceda. Here's the batting order for Tijuana, Mexico. The shortstop Manuel Estrada leads off. Batting second in left field, Roberto Cardona. Batting third, the right fielder, Alberto, Alberto Mendoza. In the cleanup spot, it's the catcher, Ernesto Lopez. The third baseman, Ivan Rodriguez, bats fifth, batting sixth, the center fielder, Hector Martinez, in the seventh spot. And playing first base is Miguel Sepulveda. Batting eighth and pitching, David Gomez. And in the ninth spot, it's second baseman, Isaac Barriga. Defense for Brownsville, Texas. Sauceda on the mound. Rudy Gonzalez behind the dish. Damian Cortez at third. At shortstop, Juan Rivera. Jorge Alvarado's at second base. And Annie Rivera is at first. In the outfield from left to right, Jose Gutierrez, Hugo Cantu, and Luis Balderas. Manuel Estrada leads it off here for Mexico. Right-handed batter takes a fastball outside for ball one. Good strong fastball right off the bat there from Sauceda. Left-hander winds and delivers. Misses outside again. Tijuana, Mexico, a really big growing city. 1.6 million people, one of the fastest growing cities in Mexico right now. 2 0 fastball on the outside corner for a called strike. It's actually right on the border with San Diego. Sauceda with the 2-1 pitch. Another good fastball, this time again on that outside edge for a called strike to even the count of two. Estrada leading off the bottom of the first inning. Swings and misses. And again, Sauceda locating that pitch near the outside edge. Right over the corner. He kept it out there, really, every pitch that he threw to Estrada. <coughs> Roberto Cardona, the left fielder to bat now. Bunts it hard, third base side, trying to catch Cortez playing deep. He does, and he beats the throw to first for a bunt single. Wow, the speed from Cardona right there. That ball came hard off the bat. It was the third baseman, Cortez, who scooped it up. But the speed of Cardona gets him there. It's a great running there from Cardona. Oh, look at him digging it down the line, beating the throw easily. Alberto Mendoza, the right fielder to bat now. Takes outside, ball pops out of the glove of Gonzalez, and Cardona will end up at second base. Wild pitch, the ruling there. One ball to Mendoza. Sauceda checks the runner Cardona at second base. Pitch misses down and in.
Bottom of the first inning, no score. Fourth game of the day. Alberto Mendoza waiting on a 2-0 pitch from Brownsville, Texas left-hander Christopher Sauceda. Pitch lifted foul and out of play to the right of home plate. Just missed a car over in the parking lot. <laughs> Two balls, one strike. Sauceda with the stretch and the pitch. Missed outside with the fastball. Mendoza nods his head at home plate umpire Jeff DeShellis. Mexico first qualified for the Pony League World Series back in 1959. 18 different teams, different locations have represented Mexico here at the Pony League World Series over the course of its 67 year history. 3-1 pitch fouled down into the dirt. Full count now to Mendoza with the runner Cardona at second and one out. <coughs> Sauceda looks in, gets the sign. Now the 3-2 pitch, fouled off out of play. Mexico has just one Pony League World Series championship, coming back in 1972. Mendoza waiting on a 3-2 pitch here as Sauceda stretches, checks Cardona at second. Now delivers line right back through the box for a base hit. And the speedy Cardona going to be held at third. Good, strong throw by the center fielder Cantu to get that in. Ball was ripped right up the middle there by Mendoza. Good, strong throw from Cantu. Keeps Cardona at third. So I say they had to get out of the way of that one. And he cut off the throw as well. Cantu's throw is right on the money. We so Sauceda nearly got a glove to it. Go ahead, Mark. Well, we saw how quickly Cardona got down the line at first. You thought, you know, they would uh, thought they would send him and, and, and he might score and score easily with that speed, but credit to Cantu for getting that ball in with a strong throw. First pitch misses outside to Ernesto Lopez, the catcher. Back to back hits now for Mexico. One ball, no strikes to Lopez. Saucedo with runners at the corners. Checks first, now delivers. Hit hard, but foul off the top of the fence on the first base side. Just a hair behind that one. One and one to Lopez. Folks in the local area, if you get a chance, come out this week and see uh, one of the new additions this year, the video board out in left center field. One, one, pick off throw to first. Now throw down to second, cut off there, throw home is gonna be in time. Throw was a little bit wide, but a nice job by the catcher, Rodolfo Gonzalez, to put the tag on Cardona as he tried to come home on that double on the back end of that double steal. Great tag at home. Well, that's a close play, too. Uh, that right leg just went to the side of home plate a little bit. I think if he's in a bit, he might have slid in there safely underneath the tag, but that was a good tag there at home from play goes, Gonzalez. Play goes 1-3-6-2 and a stolen base. Now a comebacker to Sauceda. He'll jog over toward first, flip underhanded to Rivera to retire the side. Couple of hits, one left on, no score after one inning here. Tijuana, Mexico and Brownsville, Texas here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series.
Come on down to the fair, the Washington County Agricultural Fair, August 11th through 18th. We have everything you're looking for and more. Animals, music, food, monster trucks, school bus demolition derby, and more. Stop on down, get a taste of the county, and have a blast. But the party just starts here. We have something for everyone. Indoors, outdoors, history, sports, gaming, fun. Why don't you make a weekend of it? Plan your stay today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com and see what you've been missing. We have over 65,000 people coming through 12 access points. Imagine if you could change the world. I do, every day. Imagine the world in your hands. Innovative education for innovative minds. Imagine from Cal U to protecting the homeland. Your destiny starts here. California University of Pennsylvania. Jorge Alvarado and Luis Balderas for Brownsville, Texas. Gomez with two strikeouts in that first inning. Gutierrez right-handed batter playing left field for Brownsville. Chops the first pitch up the third baseline. Rodriguez charges and not going to have time and he throws it away. But uh, Gutierrez running down the line will not turn and try to go to second, and it's a wise choice. Yeah, he had that well beat out, even if that throws on target, I think. See Rodriguez come in here charging. Slow bouncer, kind of dies in that grass right there in the speed. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Gutierrez would have been there. Jorge Alvarado, the batter, right-handed hitting second baseman, takes a strike. Seen some speed in this game, Mark. Each team with two hits. But still no runs. One strike pitch on the way to Alvarado. Shows bunt and went after a pitch that looked to be out of the strike zone and offered at it 0-2. That was in the opposite batter's box. He went chasing that one pretty far. So Alvarado in an 0-2 hole. Gomez going to step off here and reset. And his catcher, Lopez, going to go out and have a word. Sometimes your coach, though, they don't care where that ball is. If they're trying to bunt, you're going to try to get the bat to it. Gomez ready to deliver. An 0-2 pitch, the right-hander stretches and delivers with a runner going. Throw down to second base, not going to be in time. Pitch was outside, thought for a second it might have been a pitch out. I thought the same thing, I think it was a pitch out. I think they were expecting that steal there from Gutierrez. Yeah, oh, definitely yes. a pitch no out. no question. Throw just a little bit short of the bag. So one and two now to Alvarado. Pitch from Gomez, chopped to the left side. Gets through the hole to Estrada. All he can do is look the runner back at second base. Had no play on Alvarado at first, so a couple of infield singles to start the inning here in the top of the second for Brownsville, Texas. Well, I think that's two good decisions right there by the Mexico defense. First of all, Rodriguez lets Estrada take it, and Estrada decides not to throw it. Well, that's a play. If Rodriguez doesn't catch it, they have no chance to get it out. Luis Balderas, the right fielder to bat now, right-handed hitter. Back-to-back -back infield singles to start the top of the second. 
And a little confusion. Gomez looks a little frustrated as he comes off the pitching rubber there. Now the catcher, Lopez, relaying defensive signals. I think Gomez was ready to go, and then he had to wait. Big hole on the right side here. Ball button, and it's popped up. And it's going to go foul. And charging in was Rodriguez. It was over his head. The shortstop Estrada coming hard into foul territory on the third base side. Couldn't get there either. Well, Rodriguez playing in front of the bag, expecting the bunt here from Balderas. And then charged in for the bunt. And that one just popped right over his head in foul territory. One strike to Balderas. Gomez, a long look in, now the stretch and the one strike pitch. Ross again bunts it and pops it up. It's the third baseman, Rodriguez, who will take it and look the runner, Gutierrez, back to second base. That's twice, Ross popped it up down that third base line. The first one was over Rodriguez's head in foul territory. That one in perfect position for Rodriguez to get to it. Gomez tailing off there at the last second. Bader is just getting the bat underneath the ball there and popping it up. Center fielder Hugo Cantu now bats with one out. He squares to bunt, takes, runner goes, throw down to third base, and out there. Good, strong throw by Lopez. And not really a slide from Gutierrez. Not that I think it would have made any difference. I think he tried to get to the outside of the bag to avoid the tag. But that play was not really close thanks to the strong throw. I'm not sure if he knew he was going to be out, so he didn't try to slide. I think he stepped on Rodriguez, too, who is shaken up now. Well, Rodriguez, a good hitter. He's our home run derby champion from earlier the other day. Kind of a, I don't know if I would call that a half slide, but he went hard with the right foot on top of the foot of Rodriguez. Decided to slide too late, kind of. Stepped right on Rodriguez. So we go from first and second, nobody out, to runner at first and two outs. And a one strike count to Cantu. Left-handed batter playing center field for Brownsville. One strike pitch, fouled out of play. This is Hugo Cantu Jr. His dad, one of the coaches on this Texas team. Gomez ahead in the count, no balls, two strikes. The right-hander stretches and delivers. Pitch is down and in, in the dirt. Good backhanded play there by the catcher, Lopez. One ball, two strikes. Gomez with the stretch, checking the runner, Alvarado at first. Pitch misses upstairs. Looked like a good breaking ball there. I mean, just a little high when it came through the zone. By the time we got to Lopez, it, it was in the zone, but that was after it had passed the batter Cantu. And now Cantu asks for and gets time. You do some umpiring. How difficult is that when a pitch drops that much that by the time it gets to the catcher, it looks like a strike? It is pretty difficult because those catchers like to frame up those pitches too and really watch the ball, see where it finishes. 2-2 two -two pitch, swing and a miss. Cantu down on strikes to end the inning. A couple of infield singles to start the inning. But a caught stealing, one left on, no runs after an inning and a half. Brownsville, Texas, Tijuana, Mexico, scoreless here at the next Sporting Goods Pony League World Series.
I tell my patients often, in orthopedics, you don't want to be an interesting case, but if you are, uh, you want to get your care right here. With foot and ankle surgery, the goal is really to get people back moving. And most importantly, I want to get you back permanently, not just once and then all of a sudden you're injured again. UPMC has a comprehensive care delivery model across the entire treatment span, from prehabilitation all the way through rehab. We have everything that the patient would need to get better. My name is Dr. McAllis Hogan, and I choose to practice orthopedic surgery at UPMC. Plenty to do in Washington County, including the Meadows Casino and Racetrack Hotel, slots, table games, and a whole lot more, plus great shopping. Washington County, home to Pony Baseball and Softball World Headquarters. We head to the bottom of the second inning. Tijuana, Mexico coming to bat scoreless against Brownsville, Texas. Ivan Rodriguez will lead it off. Right-handed hitting third baseman followed by Hector Martinez and Miguel Sepulveda. Both of these teams thus far playing the small ball game, trying to bunt players over, steal some bases, and both teams capitalizing and getting some outs. Both teams caught stealing. Christopher Saucedo, the left-hander for Brownsville, delivers first pitch, misses downstairs to Rodriguez. Rodriguez, the home run champion. On Friday afternoon, hit three in the first round. Was not the winner of the first round, but enough to advance. Two in the second round, two in the championship. 1-0 pitch outside. Enough to claim the title. Two balls, no strikes to Rodriguez, leading off the bottom of the second inning, no score. Fourth game of the day. Bay County, Michigan, 8-5 over the Dominican Republic. Youngstown, Ohio, 10-0 over Vienna, Austria. Swing and a miss. And the Bronx over Washington County, 15-13. Two balls and a strike here to Rodriguez. Sauceda into the windup. Here comes his 2-1 pitch. Fastball misses low and away. Winner of this game will get tomorrow off and won't play until 8 o'clock on Monday night. Winner will face the winner of Long Beach, California, who has not played yet, and Bronx, New York. Yeah, Chinese Taipei and Long Beach, the two teams that uh, we will not see until tomorrow. Swing and a miss. Like something off speed there, Rodriguez. Good pitch on the inner edge. Rodriguez came up empty on the swing, full count. Chinese Taipei takes on Bay County tomorrow at noon. 3-2 fastball, misses low, so a leadoff walk to Rodriguez. Hector Martinez now. Get a look at the bracket. Mention Long Beach will play for the first time tomorrow against the Bronx. Winner of this game off until Monday. Loser of this game will play Washington County tomorrow at 7.30. Martinez steps in here for Mexico. Bunts it up the third baseline. Handled by Cortez, throw to first in time. Nobody at second base, so a big turn by Rodriguez, but he's not going anywhere. Sacrifice isn't efficient. Martinez moves Rodriguez over. Good strong throw from Cortez at third there. 
Ball got to him quickly, but he had no other play than to go to first. But Miguel Sepulveda, left-handed batter, playing first base, steps in for Mexico now with Rodriguez at second base and one out. Sepulveda takes a strike. Watching his feet there, almost stepped out of the batter's box. Did a little quick step to make sure he doesn't step out and have a strike called on him. We've seen that a lot here in day one. One strike pitch, misses low and away. You know, I think sometimes that is just not called as often as, as it is here and, and takes players some time to adjust to that. Yeah, the Bronx, it happened five or six times, I think, to that team in our last game. 1-1 one, one pitch, missing low again. We saw in the first game today, the Dominican Republic with a game tied, or they were losing, rather. Two strikes on a batter, he stepped out, strike three. Rodriguez at second. Sauceda for Brownsville, Texas, looks that way. Now delivers 2-1 pitch, slapped into left field for a base hit on one hop. Gutierrez fires it in, but runners at first and third with one out here for Mexico in the bottom of the second inning. Just an easy liner into left field there. Going the opposite way, moves Rodriguez to third. Each team with three hits. Pitcher David Gomez now steps in for Mexico. Sauceda works from the stretch. Going to throw over to first and chase Sepulveda back. Rivera holding Sepulveda on. Sauceda with the stretch. Now the first pitch to Gomez. Takes low for a ball. Shortstop Rivera cheating towards the bag a bit at second. Alvarado in the hole. One ball, no strikes. So Seda with the stretch. Long pause. Now the pitch. Misses outside. Sauceda struggling a little bit to find the strike zone. Taking a little bit more time in between pitches. Cleans his cleats off, takes a breath, walks around the mound. Gomez, his mound opponent, right-handed batter. Takes a fastball outside, 3-0. Gomez, the eight-spot batter. Don't want to four pitch walk him. Saucedo with the 3 0 pitch now. And he gets a called strike. Didn't just give in and groove one, though. Now that one just hanging on the edge there. Rodriguez, the runner at third. Sepulveda at first. Free ball, one strike count with one out to David Gomez. So Seda delivers, ball chopped off the plate, right out in front of the plate, juggled by the catcher, and then a throw to first, low by Gonzalez, dug out nicely by Rivera at first to get the second out of the inning. Runner at third, Rodriguez had to hold, so Pulvita moves up to second. Well, Gonzalez comes quick from his position, bobbles it just a little bit, but good job by him. He just takes one quick look down to third to make sure that Rodriguez stays there and fires it quickly to first, and Rivera digs it out of the dirt. So Isaac Barriga, the second baseman, bats now with runners at second and third and two down, right-handed hitter. Lines one up the middle for a base hit. This will score one, and then Cantu does not field it cleanly. His throw home is high, but on target, tag applied, and out trying to score from second base is Sepulveda. So a base hit and an RBI for Barriga. 
And then the play goes 8-2 to retire Sepulveda, trying to score from second base. One run in the bottom of the second inning for Tijuana, Mexico on two hits. No errors. And one left on. We've played two. Mexico now leading Brownsville, Texas, one to nothing here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and sharing this time with the family here this afternoon. Stay strong. See you at the field. You want to finish? Go finish for him. Go finish for your grandfather right now. Yes, sir. Everybody with him? Sir. <laughs> They play in all corners of the world. Boys and girls each learning the true value that only teamwork, competition, and sportsmanship can provide. Each year, more than 500,000 participants of all ages proudly represent Pony on baseball and softball diamonds of all sizes. Everyone deserves a chance to learn and play the game. They're our players today. They'll be our leaders in the future. Pony, making a difference in your neighborhood and all over our world. This is a facility that was literally built brick by brick. Footage from the 1950s as Lou Hayes Pony Field was constructed here in Washington, Pennsylvania. And through the years, it has been the home to Pony League World Series championship play. And obviously through the years, expansions, additions, and the field today looks absolutely gorgeous. Bottom of the second inning to take a one to nothing lead. Brownsville, Texas comes to bat here in the top of the third and four of the middle innings of game four here at the Dick Sporting Goods Party League World Series. Here's Nate Regan. Thanks so much, Mark. Juan Rivera, Rudy Gonzalez, and Damian Cortez due to bat this inning for Brownsville, Texas. The one, two, and three spots in this Texas lineup. David Gomez still on the bump for Mexico. He's given up three hits in the first two innings, also struck out three. Wines and deals to Rivera. Swing and a miss. Take check that. That's not Rivera. That is a different hitter there. Come in here in the third inning. I believe that's Adrian Garcia. So Garcia. Swing and a miss. Gomez winds and deals. Garcia looks at a called strike three. Three straight strikes from David Gomez to sit down the pinch hitter Garcia. That is the fourth strikeout for Gomez in the ball game. I think we have another pinch hitter as well, Mark. In the third inning. Gonzalez not batting here. Well, that's that's Juan Rivera. Yes, Garcia. Hit sorry, for yeah, Garcia hit for Annie Rivera. There you go. Uh, my, my mistake. I'm sorry. Thank you. And here, Juan Rivera smacks one up the middle for a base hit with one out. Went for a pitch up around his eyes. It appeared. And that was high. He changed it upstairs and just hit it right past the pitcher Gomez. A one nothing lead for Mexico in this ball game. One out with Rivera at first base. Now Rudy Gonzalez at the plate. He had a hit, stole two bases, but was left stranded in the first inning. 1-0 the count. Gomez from the stretch. Ball low in the dirt. Lopez drops to his knees behind the dish to block that one. Now 
This Texas team known as the Brownsville Titans. Well, they've got the Tennessee Titans powder blue on. 2-0 pitch, runner goes, and in there easily is Juan Rivera. Throw came in late and well high. Actually, the uh, second baseman, Bariga, backing up, had to make the catch on that high throw. And that one sailed over second base. 2-1 delivery here to Gonzalez. It's a ground ball to the right side, scooped up by the second baseman, Bariga. He retires Gonzalez at first and moves Rivera to third. Good hard hit. Ground ball there from Gonzalez. Bariga was cheating over towards second to try to keep the runner Rivera close, so he had to move quickly to his left to make that play. It looked very smooth in doing so. Two outs in the inning now. Top of the third. Tying run now 80 feet away. Damian Cortez takes a look at a strike. Cortez struck out his first time up. Didn't like the call either. Has an open stance there. See a lot of guys do that now, but then as the pitch comes in, they, they close it up. Yeah, they square up. 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Didn't square up as much as I thought he would there. It kind of goes to that leg kick. It's a high leg kick. The foot's coming up three quarters to his waist. There's some pitchers that don't have that much of a leg kick. <laughs> <laughs> the 0-2 now to Cortez. Swing and a miss, strike three. Two strikeouts in the inning for David Gomez. A hit and one left stranded at the top of the third for Texas. Mexico still leads 1-0 here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Kick off the fall season at the 48th annual Washington and Greene County's Covered Bridge Festival, presented by EQT, September 15th and 16th, held at 10 locations featuring a variety of craft and food vendors, historical reenactments, and entertainment. But the celebration just starts here. We have something for everyone, indoors, outdoors, history, sports, gaming, fun. Why don't you make a weekend of it? Plan your stay today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com and see what you've been missing. The Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series is presented in part by C. Harper, by AHN Sports Performance, and by Slovenian Savings and Loan. We head to the bottom of the third inning. Mexico trying to add on to a 1-0 lead over Brownsville, Texas. Run coming last inning, an RBI base hit for Isaac Bariga. Estrada, Cardona, and Mendoza due to lead things off here for Mexico. Estrada steps in. He struck out his last time at the plate. Breaking ball is outside from Saceda. Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series coming to you on 1450 AM, WJPA Washington. Thank our friends from Pikewood Sports for video streaming as well, available at PonyWorldSeries.com, also on uh, MLB.com. 1-0 pitches outside, two balls, no strikes. Now to Estrada. What Pikewood has done for this series has been tremendous. Done a lot for us as well. Get, oh get a goodness. look at uh, replays. 
A lot of great work. If we got to get them Parsons. to come do high school football for us. There no you one. go. <laughs> 2-0 pitch, ground ball down the line at first, scooped up by Rivera, and she'll tag the bag pretty easily there. Mark, we believe that is the, the first female to play in the Pony League World Series. That is correct. It's asked around to the best of anyone's knowledge, that is the case, and she makes a nice play there handling that ground ball. There have been female coaches before here at the Pony League World Series, but it's the first one that we know of to get on the field and participate. Now Cardona strokes one into right field. That's a fair ball off the line. Rounding first now is Cardona diving into second, and he's in there safely. Now he gets up. He's going to try to run to third. No one covering, and he slips, and he's tagged. Now Cortez was backing up that throw to second base, and Cardona got up thinking he could get to third, but a good job hustling back to the play by the third baseman, Cortez. First of all, that ball just right on the chalk line, and the throw by uh, Balderas to second base was outstanding, just a little bit offline. Yeah, that throw was on the money, and I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I see that third base is not covered there. But, yeah, you know, you got plenty of players on the field. Now one stroked into right field. This one going back, and it's over the wall. Right in front of the scoreboard, a solo shot for Alberto Mendoza, and Mexico takes a 2-0 lead. Two well-hit balls back-to-back -back here by Mexico. That could have been a two-run shot if Cardona doesn't get up and run to third. No one well hit. Just clearing the fence, over the fence and underneath the scoreboard in right center field. Brings up cleanup spot batter Lopez. Lopez grounded out his first time up. 1 0 the count. 2 0 Mexico lead now. Lopez ground ball to the left side. Played off the hop by the shortstop Rivera. Throw to first. Ends the inning. Two hits for Mexico. The solo home run for Alberto Mendoza gives Mexico a 2-0 lead over Brownsville, Texas here at the Pony League World Series. For 35 years, the C. Harper name has stood for more than just an honest deal on a good car. It has stood for family. With his wife, Cheryl, Casey Harper has nurtured the business to become one of the largest in the region. Children Casey Jr. and Cassandra, son-in-law Bill, and grandson Cassius are all part of the team, along with a devoted staff and lifelong customers who we consider family too. For 35 years, this has been our life. We thank you, our customers, for making it part of yours. Texas trailing Mexico two to nothing here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Cortez, Saceda, and Gutierrez due to bat this inning for Brownsville, Texas. Mexico fans enjoying themselves. Dick's had a 10 up there. You could make all kind of signs, support each and every one of the teams here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Those fans have 
come a long way. Tijuana, Mexico, 2,400 miles from where we're at in Washington. Be interesting to see now as both pitchers are uh, getting near 50 pitches. First pitch is inside. And again, this is Sauceda. I said Cortez was leading off. That's my mistake. So you throw 51 pitches, then you need three days rest. If you throw 50, you only need two days rest. And we've seen a lot of coaches so far today managing their staffs, keeping guys under 50 and getting them out. Especially the Bronx in the last game. You know, they had nine different pitchers in that game, I believe. Yeah, and I think they're all eligible to... Uh, all but two. I think two <laughs> went over. They were watching very closely. 1-1 one, one pitch foul away here by Sauceda. So it's Sauceda, Gutierrez, and Alvarado that are due to bat this inning. They did change the pitch count rule this year in Pony League. Instead of inning limits, it's now pitch limits. 95, the max a pitcher can go in a single game. One, two pitch, and Sauceda chases it upstairs for out number one. And that is the fourth strikeout for Gomez. That's more than that. Make it six. six. But again, just to run down those numbers, if you throw fewer than 20 pitches, you don't. Uh, you can come back the next day and pitch. And the Bronx team, they, they were watching that very closely. They had one go over on accident. So out of the two that went over, the one was actually a mistake. 21 to 35 pitches requir requires one day rest, 36 to 52 days rest, 51 to 65, three days rest. Here's a well hit ball deep into center field. And at the warning track, Hector Martinez makes the grab, his back touches the wall. As he caught it. Gutierrez just slightly underneath that one. Plus, he hit it to almost to the deepest part of the ballpark, just a little bit right of the 305 sign. Again, just back to those pitch count uh, numbers. You pitch uh, between 36 and 50 pitches. You need two days rest, 51 to 65 pitches, three days rest. And then 66 to the max 95, you need four days rest. Two outs, base is empty now for Jorge Alvarado. Four hits in the game for Texas. No runs quite yet. A one pitch to Alvarado. It was a called strike two. Gomez starting Alvarado out with two curveballs. First one, Alvarado kind of ducked away from it, and, and it broke in for a strike. 0-2 pitch swung on and missed. Gomez picks up his seventh strikeout of the ball game in Brownsville, Texas is set down in order in the fourth. Mexico to Texas nothing here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. If I just had a Dunkin' Run snack, I could probably think my way out of this. <sighs> The Dunkin' Run Menu, delicious $2 afternoon snacks. Hi, I'm Dylan Radigan. The world is brimming with possibilities, and that keeps me busy. My latest invention may be able to feed and sustain communities around the world. My team and I are always on the go, meeting new people and seeing new places. I produce films that I really care about. It's an honor to speak to audiences around the world. When people come together, meaningful work gets done. How do I do all this? Well, that part's easy. Hotelplanner.com. Wonderful history here in Washington County. The Meadowcroft Rock Shelter and Historic Village relives 16,000 years of history in one day at the site of the oldest evidence of human existence in North America. And the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum, over 50 restored and antique trolley rides. Washington County, home to Pony Baseball and Softball World Headquarters.
Mexico looking to add on to a 2-0 lead over Brownsville, Texas here. Game four here in today's quadruple header. Earlier games today, Bay County, Michigan defeated the Dominican Republic 8-5 in extra innings. Youngstown, Ohio took down Vienna, Austria with a shutout 10-0. That 110 run rule activated in six innings. And a 15-13 marathon contest in eight innings as the Bronx defeated the host team, Washington County. Rodriguez leading things off for Mexico in the bottom of the fourth inning. one the count. Ground ball, smacked to the left side, played off the hop by the third baseman, Cortez, throw to first for the first out of the inning. Mexico has had two hits in each of the first three innings. Scoring single runs in the second and third. Hector Martinez comes to the plate. Had a sacrifice bunt that moved Rodriguez over from first. Pitch count unofficially for Sauceda at 44 right now. First pitch to Martinez, a breaking ball. It's left outside and low. Martinez and Sepulveda both scheduled to bat in this inning as well. 1-0 delivery. Called strike on the inner edge. And Martinez jumped back out of the way, but it caught the inside corner. Sauceda with just one strikeout this far. One one pitch. Martinez behind that one a little bit. You know, you always want to throw strikes as a pitcher. But, uh, the, the, you know, again, the pitch limits will, I don't want to say force you to throw more strikes, but, you know, you can't nibble as much, that's for sure. 1-2 offering foul away now by Martinez. Seems like Sauceda's bringing it a little bit right there. It's twice now that Martinez has been, has been behind the and, fastball. And there are still going to be times where, especially if, you know, if you're ahead 0-2, you're going to try to get the batter to chase something out of the strike zone. So there are times when you want to throw, uh, throw a ball. 1-2 pitch, breaking ball left outside. Evens up the count of 2-2. Two and two. We'll have four more games for you tomorrow here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series, getting underway at noon. Bay County taking on Chinese Taipei in the winner's bracket. 2-2 Two -two pitch, fly ball into right center field. This will drop down and roll to the warning track. Rounding first now is Martinez, and he slides into second for a one-out double. Just hitting the gap. Kind of died in the grass a little bit. Well placed, though, between the, the right and center fields. Hit just short of the track and trickled onto it. We have a visit to the mound here for Texas, and we will have a pitching change. That will be it for Sauceda. After unofficially 49 pitches. So he stays under the 50 pitch limit. You'll need two days rest to pitch again. Get the changes for you here in a moment. It's been a fun day after all the rain yesterday. We sat here uncertain exactly what was going to happen here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Both games uh, on opening night rained out last night, postponed to this morning, moving tonight's nightcap that was originally scheduled, then to tomorrow. Only three games were supposed to be on tap for tomorrow, but had to move the schedule all around. So earlier today, again, no game today has gone the regular scheduled seven innings. Bay County taking down the Dominican Republic in extras. Great comeback win there for the team from Michigan. Youngstown, Ohio, piling it on early, or late rather, to shut out Austria 10 0 in six innings. That really doesn't show how well Austria played up there until the final two innings. 
And then the marathon game, the Bronx defeated Washington County 15-13 in eight innings. Washington County tying it up in the bottom of the seventh to force extras. And the Bronx actually came out to, in the top of the eighth, put up six runs. Washington County answered with four, just couldn't do the six there to keep things going. Changes, Jose Gutierrez, who was playing left field, comes in to pitch. Saceda, who was pitching, now goes to first base. Rivera out of the ball game. And Justin Duran is now playing left field for Brownsville. So Gutierrez on the bump. He will pitch to Miguel Sepulveda. A 2-0 lead for Mexico. Bottom of the fourth inning. One out with Hector Martinez at second base. First pitch to Sepulveda is to the backstop, and Martinez takes third standing up. Gutierrez, maybe just a little bit too pumped up with that first pitch. Got away from him inside. Moves Martinez to third now. 1-0 delivery. Swung on and missed there by Sepulveda. He had a single back in the second inning. And on the Isaac Bariga single, trying to take home, but was thrown out at the plate. 1-1 one, one pitches inside. Infield in for Brownsville, Texas. And with just one out and a runner at third, get a step at home. Two an offering from Gutierrez is inside for ball three. Last time Mexico made it to the championship game here at the Pony League World Series was back in 2013. Los Mochis Sinawala was the squad that was able to do that as Sepulveda gets walked to first. Runners on the corners now for Mexico. David Gomez. Stands in right-handed batter. Runners on the corners with one out. Two-nothing lead for Mexico. Gomez last time up bounced one off of the plate at home and was scooped up by Gonzalez as he was thrown out at first. Now here's a liner down the right field line. Foul. A couple of other rule changes this year in Pony League. Bat change rule. BB Core certified minus three bats. Despite that, that's the only bat that does not need the USA bat licensing stamp to be used in the league. Also, the age limit set, 14 years old. They changed the date. Basically, uh, you had to be a certain age before the season. And then you could have some 15-year-olds playing here in Pony League, where they moved it now. It's the end of the season uh, from, I think it was April 30th to August 31st. They changed the day, too. 1-1 one, one pitch swung on and missed by Gomez. Actually, that's changed a couple of times recently. It was August. Actually, it was August 1st from 51 through 2005, then April 30th from 06 to uh, 7, 2017. 1-2 pitch line down the first baseline, and that is a foul ball just past the glove of Sauceda. He almost was able to dive and get that ball. Great attempt there down the line. Just past his glove into foul territory. Sauceda holding. Sepulveda on there at first. One ball, two strikes the count to the batter, Gomez. Breaking ball. Misses. Evens up the count at two and two. 
What kind of creates a, a gap year here in Pony Lake, too? 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside runs the count full. And gap year, I mean, by changing those ages a little bit. Those 15, what those players who would be 15 kind of had to bump up. A year early, you don't have any 15-year-olds now playing. Payoff pitch. Slow bouncers foul. Runner at third, Martinez. Still the responsibility of Sauceda. To this point, he's given up two runs on seven hits, both earned. One walk, one strikeout. Payoff pitch again is a called strike three. First strikeout for Gutierrez. Beautiful pitch. Right down the middle. Oh, Backdoor movement there to the right-handed hitter. Two outs now in the inning. Bottom of the fourth. A 2-0 lead for Mexico. Runners on the corners for the nine-spot batter, Barriga. Gutierrez steps off the mound. Barriga had an RBI single. Back in the second inning that gave Mexico a 1-0 lead. Solo home run by Mendoza in the third made it a 2-0 advantage for Mexico. Barriga took one step back and then had to catch himself before he took that second step out of the box. A one pitch is over the catcher Gonzalez's head, but holding it third is Martinez. Sepulveda will take second. So two runners in scoring position now. Second wild pitch thrown by Gutierrez. That one well high. Over the head of everybody. Into the backstop. One ball, one strike the count. As Gutierrez delivers. This one popped out of play by Barriga. If there's a bright side to that second wild pitch, it's that Gutierrez now is able to go back to the windup. A lot of pitchers are much more comfortable pitching from the windup than they are the stretch. And you get some guys who just pitch exclusively from the stretch. One, two delivery, swung on and missed. Two runners in scoring position, but Mexico can't bring them across. A hit, a walk, two left on in the fourth for Mexico. They hold on to a 2-0 lead over Brownsville, Texas, here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. As a mother of three, I've seen the positive impact sports have on kids. At Dick Sporting Goods, we believe everyone should have the chance to play. And if cost ever gets in the way, that goes against everything we believe. If you find a lower price from a competitor, we'll match it with our best price guarantee. Because it's not enough to offer you the best gear. We need to offer it at the best price. The year was 1955, and off the bus came the representatives from Youngstown, Ohio, taking part in the Pony League World Series. And this year, Youngstown, Ohio, back in tournament play as well as one of the representative teams. Youngstown, Ohio, a long tradition here at the Pony League World Series. Watching these old photos of them building Lou Hayes Pony Field here in Washington Park in the city of Washington. It'll be some old, somebody's old home movies that they've uh, found in the last couple of years, and great addition to the uh, to the webcast. See those guys building this place is pretty well, cool. Some of the players and some of the old scenes of. Uh, 
Washington back in the 50s. Balderos can too. Due to bat as well as Duran who entered in the nine spot. Popped up here by Balderos behind home plate. Now it's interesting Gomez now unofficially at 55 pitches so clearly over the uh, the 50 pitch limit so now he's going to require a minimum three days rest we'll see when he gets close to 65 whether or not they uh, elect to take him out of the game one one pitch is low swung on though by Balderas for a strike but on the other hand you know and, and a lot of this depends on how you feel about the other pitchers that you have but you know you got a guy who's pitching well you know, it's always important to stay in the winner's bracket. So, you know, the guy's pitching well. That's the other side of the coin. Leave him in there because the, you know, you, you bring somebody in who may who may struggle, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, what was a two nothing lead can can become a deficit very quickly. Ball outside here to Balderas runs the count full. A two nothing lead for Mexico. Brownsville, Texas at the plate, leading things off here in the top of the fifth is Balderas. Really depends how deep your pitching goes on your team. Payoff pitch popped up. Foul territory down the first baseline. Going over for it is the catcher, Lopez, who couldn't get the glove to it. Yeah, overran it just a little bit and had to reach back and couldn't make the catch. Kept tailing towards the fence, and he overran it just a bit. Couldn't get it in the glove. He'll be charged with an error. First error of the game for either side. Payoff pitch again. Here's a fly ball. Well hit in the center field. Martinez is back just in front of the warning track, and he makes the catch. One down. And a lot of times that play that's not made by Lopez when he gets charged with that error, it comes back to haunt you, and that, that one almost did. Hit really well, but Baldur's got just underneath it a little bit and a nice play by Hector Martinez in center field. He turned and ran back to the warning track, then found the ball again, and uh, then had to, you know, came back in a couple of steps. You want to get back there close to that fence, and then if, and that gives you an opportunity to come back in if the ball doesn't get out or go off the fence. One out and base is empty for Hugo Cantu. Struck out back in the second inning. 1 0 delivery. Cantu takes a called strike one. We've seen a couple of balls right into dead away center. Deepest part of the ballpark. I think it was Gutierrez last inning who sent Martinez deep. 1 1 pitch. He's low and away. Two balls and one strike to Cantu. Foul away. Back to the netting. Right in front of the press box. You didn't flinch on that, Mark, did you? No, nah, because I knew it was low. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't gonna come up to, to the window. I'll make it look good like I'm like I'm bold, but two two offering. Cantu lines this one off the glove of the first baseman, Sepulveda, and into right field. We get another look at that one, which I, I think we will. I think Sepulveda maybe mistimed his jump a little bit, maybe thought that ball was hit a little harder than it actually was. I think he was on his way down, actually, when the ball hit off. He said, well, not quite. He, he timed that pretty well, just uh, off the tip of his glove. Ooh, they charged Sepulveda with an error on that. That one was a... a Tough one to catch. Yeah, if it's off the tip of the glove and he and he timed it right, I I I, I got to go base hit on that one, but I'm not the official scorer. Second error of the game now. Second one of the inning on Mexico. This is Justin Duran batting, who came in last inning defensively to play left field with the pitching change. Swing and a miss.
First time we've seen Duran at the plate. Brownsville, Texas trailing Mexico, two to nothing. Top of the fifth inning. Went out with a runner at first. He takes off for second now and sliding in there safely as Cantu. But striking out there was Durant. Eighth strikeout for Gomez. First number two, two down in the inning now. Runner in scoring position. It's Cantu. Rivera. Hits one well into right field. Going back is Mendoza just in front of the warning track, and he tracks it down and makes the grab. An error and one left on for Texas as Brownsville still trails Mexico 2 to nothing here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony Lake World Series. If you love a good county fair, the West Alexander Fair is a must. September 3rd to the 8th, we'll be wrecking cars at the Demolition Derby, showcasing animals, judging baked goods, enjoying food, music, and more. It's a week where the world stops for a little old-fashioned fun, but the party just starts here. We have something for everyone. Indoors, outdoors, history, sports, gaming, fun. Why don't you make a weekend of it? Plan your stay today at visitwashingtoncountypa.com and see what you've been missing. events are what makes Washington County special, including the annual Oktoberfest. Tradition, history, it's all part of Washington County, home to Pony Baseball and Softball World Headquarters. Top of the order coming up for Mexico here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Estrada, Cardona, and Mendoza will bat this inning. Estrada still looking for his first hit of the ball game, 0 for 2 today. As Gutierrez stays in, rips one down the third base line. Does Estrada, this one will roll into left field, a leadoff base hit for Manuel Estrada. Just ripped that ball, not much time at all to uh, try to react to that ball by Cortez at third. It was by him in a hurry. Good job by the uh, left fielder Dur to uh, Duran to get over there and cut it off and hold Estrada to a single. Cortez tried to get to it, but that was smoked by Estrada there. Mexico up two zip. Bottom of the fifth with a runner at first base now for Roberto Cord Cardona. Throw over to first base and Gutierrez kind of lost his balance after he threw that one. Estrada back in there safely for Mexico. Cardona swing and a miss. Again, the winner of this one won't play until Monday night at 8 o'clock. We'll take on the winner of Long Beach, California and the Bronx. And you now calling for his catcher is the pitcher Gutierrez. The loser of this contest will play tomorrow night at 7.30 against Washington County in the loser's bracket. That's an elimination game. Washington County lost earlier today, 15 to three to the Bronx. 15-13. Oh, what did I say, 15 to three? Man, 15-13. That was one of the uh, wilder game, wilder games in recent series history. 
A one pitch foul away. Strada got a jump there. We always talk about that Cogwas Maui game in 1984 where uh, Cogwas was batting in the bottom. I'm sorry, they were batting in the top of the sixth inning and they just kept scoring run, you know, runs after runs after runs. And that Maui, many runs. Maui, Maui had to have their chance to bat. That's, that's the, why that game kept going. That's the record, 23 to 9. Now the runner goes this time. Estrada slides into second safely because the throw was well wide to the right of second base there from Gonzalez. Stolen base for Estrada as Cardona is retired. Brings up Alberto Mendoza. He's two for two. And the solo home run back in the third. First pitch to him is a fly ball. Well hit into right center. This will bounce at the warning track and roll to the wall. Estrada rounds third. He will score. And Mexico takes a 3-0 lead on the RBI double from Alberto Mendoza. Well, Estrada had to hold at second base to make sure that ball was not going to be caught, but still scored easily. Actually, he went back, didn't go all the way back to second base, but went back to within a couple of feet. Alberto Mendoza now three for three. He's a triple away from the cycle. Oh, we have an injury out in center field. Cantu shaken up. Didn't see exactly how that happened, but uh, he cannot stay up on his feet. Looks like an injury to his left leg. You were talking about that game back in 1984, the 23-9 win for Puerto Rico over Hawaii. That's the most runs ever scored in a single game, 32. Next highest was back in 2013, involved Bay County, Michigan, who we saw today. Mon Yacht defeated Bay County 16-14. That's 30 runs. Well, that record tied. Get another look at what Go happened ahead. to Cantu out there. He overran that ball and kind of stumbled on the warning track. Picked it up. And I'm not sure if it was when he stumbled or when he uh, when he threw back in, because he, he put a lot of weight on that left leg when he threw the ball back in, but may have injured it prior to that. It looked like a twisted ankle, and they're going to carry him off. They're going to lift him up. He's kind of laughing about it as he gets carried off the field. A 3-0 lead now for Mexico. An RBI single by Isaac Barriga. Scored Rodriguez in the second inning to give Mexico a 1-0 lead. Then the solo home run by Mendoza in the third to make it 2-0. Now the RBI double by Mendoza to score Estrada. Makes it 3-0 Mexico here in the bottom of the fifth inning. One out with Mendoza at second now for the cleanup spot batter, Ernesto Lopez, who's looking for his first hit of the game. He's 0 for 2 with two ground outs. Cantu going to be helped off the field, putting a little bit of pressure now on that foot. Justin Duran has gone from left to center. They have not gotten the official change yet. Sure, we'll get that here before Lopez takes the plate. We do get that change. Now into left field is Kyle Pruneda. First pitch to Lopez is a ball. Right field, Luis Balderas moves to left field, and Justin Durant to center. Now they moved Balderas from right to left and put Pernado in right. A couple of defensive changes there for you. Two balls, no strikes the count to the batter, Lopez. Looks at his first strike. Again, Lopez still looking for his first hit of the evening, a 3-0 lead for Mexico. Gutierrez looks Mendoza back to second. 
Mendoza gets a lead. 2-1 delivery in the dirt. Bounces in front of the plate, then off the mask. Now Gonzalez fires down to third, and in there safely is Mendoza. Some hesitation from Mendoza as Gonzalez didn't know where the ball was. One came up and smacked his face mask. Mendoza hesitating, then takes off when he realizes Gonzalez doesn't know where it is, and he slides in there safely, just beating that throw. That is considered a wild pitch. And now pitch outside to Lopez for ball four. Puts runners on the corners with one out here for Mexico, leading three to nothing in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rodriguez 0 for 1 plus a walk with a run scored. Rodriguez, the right handed batter. Just one out in the inning. Rodriguez takes strike one. Things have quieted down here. This was not a scheduled game. We weren't supposed to be here this late to begin with. 0-1 pitch outside. That will happen uh, on occasion. Get a couple of extra inning games. I mean, each each of those games went only one extra inning, but you know, a 15-13 game obviously is going to take some time to play. 1-1 pitch to Rodriguez just fouled away off the edge of the bat. And yeah, that game went nearly four hours. I thought it was the Yankees and Red Sox for a minute. <laughs> I will say, uh, watching the, the graphics come up on the TV screen, uh, a lot of these kids are Red Sox fans. Have you seen how many are Red yes. Sox fans? Yes. That and the I feel like there's a lot of Nationals, too. I, I think I that's Bryce I saw a couple Harper. of those, but I've seen mostly Yankees and Red Sox. 1-1 one, one pitch, breaking ball. Rodriguez can't connect with. That was 1-2 pitch. I'm sorry, that's a strikeout. Sorry. Apologize for that. Second strikeout of the inning for Gutierrez. As Hector Martinez gets ready to bat, we're going to have a break in the action here. Gutierrez on the mound. He has 31 pitches, which means he would only need one day of rest. And he's going to come out of the ball game, I do believe. Nope, he's going to stay in. We're just making sure that he stays with 31. Does have a couple of pitches left here with two outs. They're going to try to let him go. Hector Martinez will bat here. Two outs, runners on the corners for Mexico. Trying to add on to a 3-0 lead. Hector Martinez stands in. Swing and a miss, strike one. Martinez had a double. Took third on a wild pitch in the last inning. Was stranded there. 0-1 delivery, breaking ball left upstairs. Evens up the count of one and one. One one pitch. And again, Martinez can't connect. Big offering there. Falls behind in the count now, one and two. Gutierrez delivers. Strike three, and that's the end of the inning. Three strikeouts for Gutierrez in the inning. One run on two hits, a walk, two left on base. We've played five here at Lou Hayes Pony Field, Mexico, with a 3 0 lead over Texas at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. 
I tell my patients often, in orthopedics, you don't want to be an interesting case, but if you are, uh, you want to get your care right here. With foot and ankle surgery, the goal is really to get people back moving. And most importantly, I want to get you back permanently, not just once and then all of a sudden you're injured again. UPMC has a comprehensive care delivery model across the entire treatment span, from prehabilitation all the way through rehab. We have everything a patient would need to get better. My name is Dr. McAllis Hogan, and I choose to practice orthopedic surgery at UPMC. This is a facility that was literally built brick by brick. Footage from the 1950s as Lou Hayes Pony Field was constructed here in Washington, Pennsylvania, and through the years, it has been the home to Pony League World Series championship play and obviously through the years, expansions, additions, and the field today looks absolutely gorgeous. We head to the top of the sixth inning. Mexico with a 3-0 lead uh, over Brownsville, Texas, here to take us the rest of the way. The voice of the Pony League World Series, Mr. Mark Uron. Thank you, Nate. 3-0 for Tijuana, Mexico. Two, three, four hitters for Brownsville, Texas in the top of the sixth inning. Ronaldo, Ronaldo Gonzalez, Damian Cortez, and Christopher Saceda. David Gomez. 68 pitches right now, so he's in uh, for the duration or until he gets to 95 pitches, whatever comes first. First pitch in there for a called strike two. Gonzalez, who was one for two with a single back in the first inning. Plenty of pitches left to go all the way here to get through the sixth and the seventh if he, if he has a quick inning. One strike pitch. Gonzalez watches that one sail outside. But this is the first time today in four games that we have seen a starter stay in the game and not come out uh, once he's uh, gotten close to 50 pitches. The 1-1 one -one over everybody and to the backstop, two balls and a strike. Yeah, the only one who went pretty long as, as Gomez is here was McGarry for Austria. Oh, well, McGarry went a good bit. Two balls, one strike. Right-handed hitting Gonzalez waits. Grounds it to the right side. Barriga scoops it up. Throws the first one down here in the top of the sixth. Good hard hit ball. Right at Barriga, though. He just gobbled it right up. Damian Cortez, the batter 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. First pitch on the outside edge for a called strike from Gomez. Gomez is in a groove. One strike pitch, took something off. Go and Cortez way out in front, swing and a miss. So Gomez out in front, 0-2. Gomez has sat down eight batters in a row now. That ball just dropped off the table. Here's the 0-2, and that one's ripped into left field for a base hit. Another off-speed pitch from Gomez, this time Cortez waiting for it, and he jumped on it. First hit since the third inning for Texas. Went over the head of Rodriguez. Fifth hit of the game for Brownsville, Texas, and now Christopher Sauceda started the game on the mound, and then uh, after throwing 49 pitches, was taken out and came back uh, to play first base. So say to left-handed batter, Cortez at first with one out, soft liner down the left field line, and that is a fair ball down into the corner. Heading for third is Cortez. He will be held there, but a double for Sauceda. The runners at second and third with one out. Umpire changed his call. He put his hands up in the air. Well, to signal foul ball, I think, and then pointed. 
Boy, inside for fair. I was going to say, it looked fair from here. I thought the, the first signal I saw was fair. We'll get another look at it. Down the line here. Well, now a second look at it, it does look foul. But the first signal from the third base umpire was fair ball. Also had some players for Brownsville, Texas, down to the bullpen area, too. Got That ball got down in among those guys. So it's going to stand. It's going to be a double. Two runners in scoring position now for Texas with just one out. And they're down three to nothing. So big situation here for Brownsville. Gutierrez, the batter. He's one for two, had a single back in the second inning. Hits five and six for Brownsville. Coming with one out here in the top of the sixth inning. Gutierrez grounds one foul wide of third. Kick save by third base umpire Ray Parker. And a beauty. Wrong sport, Mark. I know. <laughs> I just wanted to say kick save and a beauty. <laughs> One strike to Gutierrez. Gomez with the stretch and the pitch. This one lined foul off the first base side. You have to say that with a British accent like the Premier League. Actually, you know what? I think that goes, uh, I'm old enough to remember this one. Marv Albert used to call New York yeah, Rangers right. hockey. And I, th right. I, think, I think that goes way back to the, to the like in the 70s when, when Marv Albert, because Remember hearing it. I'll give you that. I can give you a little Marv Albert kick save and a beauty. Okay, it's not the best, but I haven't, <laughs> I haven't practiced in a while. 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball drops in. See, I was thinking soccer when you said that, but I guess it makes more sense for hockey. You're right. Sadly, I'm old enough to remember that. Well, that wasn't that long ago. Uh, seven, like I say, that's way back in the 70s. Probably early 70s. One ball, two strikes here to Gutierrez. Gomez delivers. Ball skied, foul territory, third base side. Rodriguez has room, and he'll make the catch for the second out of the inning. Actually, if you're going to do Mar Marv Albert, all you got to say is yes. <laughs> And we're going to have a meeting on the mound here. Now, unofficially, Gomez at 80 pitches, so this is uh, not likely related to the pitch count. And no indication here that a change is going to be made. Two outs, still two runners in scoring position here for Texas. 3 nothing lead for Mexico. Three runs on nine hits, two errors in the game for Mexico. Gomez has had a strong game. Been around the strike zone. Strikeouts. Look at a few of them there on the video stream. He's definitely been dealing. He's been a groove. You know, when you get ahead in the count, then you you you, know, you have the advantage of guys. Sometimes chasing pitches with two strikes out of the strike zone. Now Jorge Alvarado to bat. He's one for two. Teammates at second and third and two down for Brownsville, Texas. They're trailing three nothing here in the top of the sixth inning. That ball hit in the air down the left field line and into foul territory. Long run and a nice catch by the shortstop Manuel Estrada to make that play and retire the side. A couple of foul pop-ups induced by Gomez when there were runners at second and third and one out. Two hits, both runners left on. We've played five and a half. And Tijuana, Mexico leading Brownsville, Texas, three to nothing here at the Dick's Sporting Goods Pony Leg World Series. The Dick's Sporting Goods Pony League World Series is presented in part by Dunkin' Donuts by California University of Pennsylvania, by ANSYS, by West Banco, and by UPMC.
Changes here for Brownsville, Texas. Justin Duran now pitching. Jose Gutierrez, who was pitching, is now in center field. So just switch those two position-wise. Chance for Mexico to add some security. Leading three to nothing, scoring a run in the second, a run in the third, and a run in the fifth. Duran, a right-hander, facing left-hander Miguel Sepulveda to open up the bottom of the sixth inning here for Tijuana, Mexico. First pitch comes in high. Sepulveda with a single and a walk in two plate appearances. Duran's 1-0 pitch. Line but foul off the fence on the third base side. One ball, one strike. Fourth game of the day here, day one of the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Technically day two, but both games rained out last night. So these are games one, two, three, and four today. Four through eight tomorrow, starting at 12 noon. One, one pitch to Sepulveda. Fastball, inside edge, back Sepulveda off the plate, but caught uh, the zone for a strike. Duran winds and delivers. Called strike three on the outside corner. I'll tell you what, he's a nice pitch. Just catches the outer edge. And between the strikeouts that Gutierrez had when he was in there pitching, he did just two innings. Pitcher David Gomez 0 for 2, swings and misses at a pitch down in the zone from Duran. Gutierrez had five strikeouts in two innings. There's one there for Duran in his first batter. One strike pitch. Gomez taps it foul up the third baseline. Barehanded play by Cortez. His throw to first, not in time. Gomez beats it for an infield single. Bang, bang, play at first. Nice play there by Cortez. It was just too slow of a roller. Yeah, he did everything right. About as close as you can get it there. Good running from Gomez. He knew that throw was coming in high. He had to duck underneath it. But he still got to the bag in time. And again, Cortez did everything you could possibly do there. And uh, as you said, Nate, the ball just wasn't hit hard enough. Didn't get to him quickly enough to get the out. Still frustrated he didn't get the out, though. Pinch hitter here for Barriga. It's Ruben Ortiz, left-handed batter. One out, Gomez at first. Ortiz showing bunt, and he bunts it third base side. Duran picks up. His only play is to first. Gets the out there. Gomez to second on the sacrifice. Good ex execution of the sacrifice bunt. Bunts that down towards third. Scooped up by Duran. So back up to the top of the order now. Miguel Estrada, who is one for three, singled and scored in the fifth inning. First pitch misses for a ball. Gomez at second with two down here in the bottom of the sixth for Mexico. They lead it 3 0. Duran with the stretch and the pitch. Misses down and in to the right handed hitting Estrada. Two balls, no strikes. Duran's 2 0 pitch. Misses high with the fastball. Fourteen fifty AM WJPA Washington bringing you the 2018 Dick Sporting Goods Pony Leg World Series. Curveball stays high and it's a four pitch walk to Estrada. That will bring up Roberto Cardona who is two for three single and a double. 
What if you're uh, Brownsville, Texas, down 3 nothing, with uh, potentially your last at-bat coming in the top of the seventh? You certainly don't want to fall behind any more than you are now. Ball lifted down the right field line. And into foul territory, overrunning it was Pruneda. He tried to put the brakes on and reach back and uh, make the catch, and he slipped down. So the ball falls foul. He was there. He could have ended the inning right there, just overran it a bit. He tried to come back, and he slipped. And, uh, I mean, again, you talk about sometimes the plays that are not made. Sometimes they come back to bite you. Cardona gets another chance here. One strike pitch to him. Chops it, third base side, gonna be a tough play. Duran over near the line, makes the throw, uh, makes the play, and the throw to first is not in time. Infield single for Cardona. A couple of infield singles here in this inning. That's a tough play for Duran to make. He has to come off the mound, reach down and come across his body to throw that one to first. And again, he could not have done anything more quickly than, than he did. That high chopper. Great split there by Saucedo to try to get the grab. So base is loaded with two down. And again, the catch that was not made in foul territory down the right field line keeps the inning going for Mexico. They have the bases loaded with two down and a chance to add to a 3 nothing lead. Check on the pitch count here for Duran on the hill. Unofficially 13 is what we have. But yeah, not much to discuss uh, defensively here. Of course, you got Mendoza up, and he's the guy that's uh, three for three and needs a triple for the cycle. So, uh, and if you had first base open, uh, likely he would be walked, but not the case here. First pitch to him, chopped foul, third base side. Mendoza with a single in the first, solo home run in the third, and the RBI double in the fifth. Three for three with two RBIs and a run scored. That's a pretty good day. Behind in the count, one strike. Duran works from the stretch with the bases loaded. Curve ball, up and in. Mendoza ducks underneath it. One ball, one strike. One out, Gomez with an infield single. He was sacrificed to second by the pinch hitter Ortiz, then a walk to Estrada and a base hit, another infield single by Cardona to load the bases and turning on it and ripping that one is Mendoza, but foul and Gomez at third and the uh, third base coach both had to be alert. He has one heck of a swing. One ball, two strikes. Duran stretches and delivers. Curveball called, strike three. Mendoza just shakes his head. Yes, and walks back to the dugout. Couple of hits, a walk, and Mexico leaves the bases loaded. Last chance going to the top of the seventh inning for Brownsville, Texas. They trail Mexico three to nothing here at the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank everyone for coming and sharing this time with the family here this afternoon. Stay strong. See you at the field. You want to finish? Go finish for him. Go finish for your grandfather right now. Yes, sir. Everybody with him? Yes, sir. <laughs> They play in all corners of the world. Boys and girls each learning the true value that only teamwork, competition, and sportsmanship can provide. Each year, more than 500,000 participants of all ages proudly represent Pony on baseball and softball diamonds of all sizes. Everyone deserves a chance to learn and play the game. They're our players today. They'll be our leaders in the future. Pony, making a difference in your neighborhood and all over our world.
pitcher to complete a game today. Go ahead, go ahead. This pitch count rule has definitely changed things. The coaches are watching for day's rest. Well, you know, and again, you get last two, the, the two games last night rained out, so that compresses the schedule even more, which brings those, the, you know, the, the, the pitch counts and the, uh, the amount of rest needed. I mean, the, the championship game is Wednesday night, so now you've only got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to, to, to play here, assuming that the weather cooperates and we don't have any more postponements. But, yeah, that, that, that brings that even more into focus. Luis Bonaros, the batter, 0 for 2. Gomez gave up a single and a double last inning with one out, but was able to get a couple of pop outs to get out of trouble. He's given up six hits in the game. Has not walked anybody. I have him with eight strikeouts. First pitch upstairs to the right-handed hitting Balderas. And boy, not walking people just means so much. Especially with the amount of strikeouts that Gomez has had today. 1-0 hits out in front of home plate. Three runs, 11 hits, two errors for Tijuana, Mexico, no runs, six hits, no errors for Brownsville, Texas. 2-0 pitch. Balderas jumps on it, hits it well into left field, hitting over toward the corner, and unable to make the running catch is Cardona. He'll turn and fire it back in, but sliding into second base is Balderas with uh, a leadoff double. So well hit ball into left field. Cardona trying to catch it on the run here. And he just can't get to it in time. Just came up short of it. Pitch in there for a called strike to Pruneda, who came in to replace Cantu when Cantu went out to, after being injured on a play in center field. And we've seen games tied late two different occasions in the seventh inning. And there's a soft liner into right field for a base hit. Balderas will be held at third, but runners at the corners with nobody out for Brownsville, Texas. Down 3 nothing here in the top of the seventh. That's why Mexico needed that security. In the bottom of the sixth, left the base is loaded. Now you've got the tying run at the plate for Texas. going to bring up Justin Duran, the pitcher. Came into the game earlier to, and uh, played a few innings in the outfield, so this is his second at-bat of the game. Struck out his first time up, takes high for a ball. Gomez running into trouble here. Ran into a little trouble last inning, but was able to wiggle his way out of it. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss. Yeah, last inning, Texas had two runners in scoring position with just one out and couldn't get him across. One ball, one strike. Gomez stretches and delivers. Duran again swings and misses. That one a breaking ball that ended up down in the dirt. Now Gomez is getting close to the 95 pitch count rule. Now at 89 pitches. The right-hander for Mexico with the stretch. And the one-two. Fastball misses outside. Duran leaned out but did not offer at it. Two balls, two strikes. Gomez and Duran both uh, waiting there for a while. I think it was Duran who called, uh, who ended up asking for time. 
Now Gomez ready, his 2-2 pitch. Durant swings and misses at, a, I think, a breaking ball that was up and out of the zone. Ninth strikeout for Gomez, first out of the inning. Back up to the top of the order. And he chased that one upstairs. That was a ball, no doubt about it, above his eyes. The nine spot has struck out now three times in the game for Texas. Two of them Duran, one of them Adrian Garcia. Left-handed hitting Juan Rivera, one for three. Takes a fastball just off the plate outside. Well, Mexico does not have anybody warming up, so if they're going to change pitchers, and right now, Gomez unofficially at 92 pitches. That's the pitcher will come from one of the position players currently out there. Ball fouled out of play down the left field line. One ball, one strike. Luis Baldera started the inning with a double down the left field line. Kyle Pineda with a base hit to right field. Balderas was held at third. Now with one out, and a one strike out, ground ball hit to second base. Barriga goes to second for one, and there will be no throw to first. Scoring from third to make it three to one is Balderas. But now two outs in the inning. Now that run doesn't mean anything. If you're Mexico, no reason to throw it away over to first base. You don't have a throw there. Scooped up by Barriga. Kind of hesitated, wasn't sure if he was going to tag the back himself or shuffle pass it over to Estrada. Eventually gets it to Estrada and doesn't give him enough time to have a throw at first base, but letting that run score means absolutely nothing. I don't know if it, if, if it was hesitation about a tag or if he just had trouble getting the ball out of his glove, but they're definitely, uh, he definitely double clutched there. So an RBI for Rivera that scores Balderas to make it three to one. And now Ronaldo Gonzalez, who is one for three, Two times he has made outs. He has grounded the ball to Barriga at second base. Backed off the plate with a fastball on the first pitch from Gomez. Again, unofficially, he's at 95 pitches, which is the limit. So uh, may not have, uh, as we said, that was unofficial. And there's a ball bounded through the hole on the right side for a base hit. Stopping at second base is Rivera. Well, I know in other leagues, I'm not sure what the official rule is, but are you allowed to finish the batter? I, I, I heard that discussion going on earlier today, and I'm not sure what the uh, what the determination was, but now they're saying the official 94. count is 94. Official count is 94 pitches. And I believe they're going to pull him here before he gets there. You only need one out, so... As long as a pitcher can do that in less than 20 pitches, it won't cost you anything here if you're Mexico. It's been a great day for David Gomez on the mound, getting the start. Came out strong with two strikeouts in the very first inning. And he was pumped up and ready to go from the very beginning of this ball game, and he's just been in a groove ever since using the junk, using the fastball, these guys to chase. He's had a great day. Nine strikeouts on the evening for David Gomez. He's at 94 pitches, so they're gonna let him go and try to get this out. Damien Cortez, the batter, one for three, singled his last time up. Tying run at first base. And there's a ball drilled into left field, going back and over toward the gap is Cardona. He'll make the catch, and that will end the ball game. Ball was hit fairly well. Didn't, didn't carry very much, but that one will end the game. A run in the top of the seventh here for Brownsville, Texas on three hits, no errors, and they strand a pair. Your final score, Tijuana, Mexico, defeats Brownsville, Texas 3-1 to one in game four of the Dick Sporting Goods Pony League World Series. That will wrap up our quadruple header here for today. Don't forget a quadruple header again tomorrow starting at noon.